And that's why the vaxxers, the anti-vaxxers employ security. So, you must know Ben Radford by now, if you spend any time in this drag room. Who, ha who doesn't know Ben Radford? <gasps> really? You in the back, simulator. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, well, uh, there it is. That, that's, you're going to talk about this? Uh, yeah, okay. that's today's topic. Uh, the, the it haunt. like I was just here. Well, you did a, your thing with your monster talk. I did my thing with uh, my what? Your, mon your monster. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you got that right, big boy. Go going ahead. a very, very bad place. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, really. It's only going downhill. So Ben's going to give you a, a little talk about an invest investigation that he did. Side effects. <laughs> but so I'll just give it to Ben because I'm making a mockery of myself right now. Okay. Yeah, I'm coming down here. So you said down there, up there. Yeah, okay. I'm done with you. <laughs> Uh, yes, thank you all for coming out. Wow, a mostly packed crowd. Excellent. Uh, thanks all for coming out. Um, uh, just to, for those of you with a little, little bit of a bio, I am managing editor of Skeptical Inquirer Science Magazine. I'm also a research fellow with the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry, which is a nonprofit educational organization uh, based in Buffalo, New York. Um, and uh, I, in addition to my editing and various other tasks, I also investigate weirdness. Uh, all manner of weirdness. I have a, a new book called Scientific Paranormal Investigation. Uh, there's a couple copies left around here. I also, I don't know if you, you, you see my Chupacabra talk yesterday? Info? Okay, Chupacabra. Yeah, I also investigated the Chupacabra. Um, and um, uh, so I'm gonna, today I'm going to be uh, focusing specifically on ghosts and ghost investigations. I've been on a handful of ghost uh, TV shows. I've been on probably a dozen or more um, of, of various types, cryptozoological, whatever else. I'm going to focus on a TV show called um, Mystery Quest. And uh, this is sort of what happened behind the scenes. Uh, I, I wish I actually have, the, I have the, the, the final edited version of it. Unfortunately, we don't have time. Ideally, I would tell you what happened and then sort of give you the behind the scenes and then and here's how it ended up cut. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have two hours, but that would actually be the, the most informative section. So, I'll go ahead and, and, um, and talk. This is about, uh, let's see, investigating Haunted Wolf Manor. Uh, this uh, investigation um, came my way because a TV producer called me up. There's Wolf Manor there. Uh, the, the, there's a key light right there. So it was, tells you that it was set up for, uh, for the videographers to do their, do their gig. And I got a call um, from a producer who said, uh, hey, we need you to come out and do an investigation. And I said, okay. Uh, and I said, um, I'm the token skeptic, aren't I? Yeah. yeah you, you are the token skeptic. Uh, he says, we're going to be pairing you up with a demonologist. <laughs> okay, continue. Whatever, and he's like, well, there's, a, there's actually a handful of uh, different crews there. There's going to be one team uh, who's doing their own investigation. We're going to have a demonologist who you're going to be paired with. You guys are getting along great. Uh, and, then, and then we have the, the, the cast and crew. And so she says, well, um, what do you need to investigate ghosts? And I said, well, it depends on the claim. Um, it it's entirely depends on the claim. I've investigated many haunted houses and ghost cases, and... and uh, there's not one blanket method to going about it. It depends on what people are saying and what people are, are say is going on. She says, well, we need visuals. We need, you know, it's TV. We need you doing something. Can you, can you do something? I'm like, well, I can do something. So um, I'm like, all right, fine. So I'm trying to work with them and trying to bring some science to it. Um, so she sent me information about Wolf Manor, which is located at 2604 Clovis Avenue, Clovis, California. Here's a quick rundown on it. It's, it's actually not terribly interesting, but this is, they, they make a big deal about this in the, in the final episode, so I thought I'd touch on it. It was built in the 1920s. Um, 
It was a family home by an Italian immigrant named Todd Andriotti. 1942, it uh, was converted into the Clovis Sanitarium. Now, this is not the sanitarium you're probably thinking of. This is not the, uh, uh, you know, in, in movies, you know, for, uh, you know, like in Jacob's Ladder, Jumping to My Mind, because it's a great thriller, but, uh, you know, where they're in uh, the, the things and they're banging their heads against the wall and blood and whatever else. This is a, um, a TB sanitarium. Still involving death and nastiness, but not exactly the, you know, the, uh, the straight-jacketed folks. 1922 was purchased and converted into a nursing home. It was bought by a man named Todd Wolf in 1997 and renamed the Andelberry Estates. Uh, and uh, then it became a fake haunted house, which I found interesting. Uh, he, uh, Mr. Wolf actually created a whole backstory to the Andelberry Estates. There is no Andelberry, except for in his, in his mind. Um, and so he had this whole story of Mr. Andelberry did this and did that. And so he was, again, marketing it as a, a fake haunted house, like you might see uh, around Halloween or carnivals or what have you. It was then, t 10 years later, Mr. Wolf decided that, hey, it really is haunted. <laughs> Interesting, okay. And he renamed it the Wolf Manor after himself, as one, as one can do. And he marketed it as a real haunted house. So it went from a fake haunted house to a real haunted house, and in 2008, Taps and the Ghost Hunters guys went over there after so, so apparently some significant lobbying. Uh, it was interesting hearing Mr. Wolf talk about his, he and his assistants writing a bunch of letters to the Taps guys, asking them to please come out and give, give, his, uh, give his place some publicity. Um, there's the house there. Um, the, <laughs> there's Porter John's in the back, not quite as spooky. Like when you see it on TV, it's all lit up from the bottom, like Amityville. Uh, it wasn't quite that scary. Um, there's Todd Wolf taping his hero shot. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, a hero shot, it's a, in, in documentary film, film it's, it's where, you know, the, the, the crew shows up and they do this, you know, or, you know, you know, the, the, the hero thing where they introduce him, they pan up and do all that. So that's, that's what he's doing there, introducing himself. And uh, so, again, he's, he's sort of running the whole show and, and trying to cooperate as much as he can with the TV crew and, and me in tow. Um, here's what the house looks like. The, uh, no, that's not real blood. That is, <laughs> that is red paint. No, those, are, those are not real cobwebs. Those are fake cobwebs. Uh, that is a real deer's head, which kind of creeped me out. <laughs> uh, and um, there's a fireplace. And, and it, I have to say, the, the whole place is really, it's, it's, it's dilapidated. I mean, it's, you know, it's, an old, it's an old building, not well taken care of. This is what it looks like from the top of the stairs. Over on this side over here um, is, uh, is what's called uh, Annie's Room, or Mary's Room. Uh, Mary's Room. Mary and Annie seem to be really popular names for female ghosts, uh, FYI. <laughs> but uh, anyway, someone's, uh, that's her room. And there's, it's interesting, there, there's a whole bunch of different levels. It's, it's not labyrinthian. I mean, there, not, there aren't, you know, it's not like uh, you know, the shining house. But it is, it is kind of weird, creepy, and, 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 and run down. And of course, this was a great place to, you know, do a, a haunting investigation. So I began my invest. I actually, I should point out, I only had um, about three or four days to prepare for this investigation. She's like, "Yeah, w can you can you come out like on Tuesday?" I'm like, well, <laughs> I guess uh, it's it's Friday. Uh, I mean, okay. So she sent me some stuff, and I did some some investigation, trying to get, trying to establish the the background of the case. That's that's what you have to do to figure out what's going on. So I began by researching a report um, by a psychic named Virginia Marco. Uh, she said, I saw a male ghost in the living room. He does not speak. He observes and follows us around. On one table, George uh, saw a, photo, a picture of a man and a woman in their 60s. George said, Virginia, look at this picture. Who do you think they were? It was the male ghost in the living room. I would have loved to see this picture. Of course, she didn't provide that. Uh, in the kitchen, I saw three ghosts, Bertha, Paul, uh, and uh, another one who didn't speak. Apparently, um, the ghost identified badges, or I don't know quite what happened. Uh, my name is Bertha. This is Paul. The other one doesn't talk. Um, the last ghost looked anorexic. So apparently, anorexia uh, is, continues uh, through the afterlife. In the, uh, in the cooking area, I saw a male ghost. He was overweight and tall. His name was William. He was the cook, 65 years old. Did he really say he was 65? I mean, does it, 
it's like, you know, tap if it's one, two, three, four. I, mean, I just, I mean, I'm not trying to make fun. I, I'm sincerely curious as to how this information came through. Uh, follows around the house. He's very active in haunting the place. And here's the most important part. On the second floor, I saw the ghost of an old woman named Mary sitting in a rocking chair. Ghosts love rocking chairs, don't they? And old Indian burial grounds. Mary told me she was very unhappy because the chair was not supposed to be there in the hallway later that day. Dee Dee moved the chair uh, to the next room to close the window. Jose took a photo, uh, took a picture, and the body of Mary appeared at the window. She told me that she was now happy because she could see again. That is, Mary's favorite rocking chair is next to a window. Uh, Mary or Jose or William or Bertha, I don't know, someone moved her chair. Uh, and she was upset about this because she could no longer sit in, in the rocking chair to look out the window. Now, I find it a bit odd because it seems to me that you could look out the, if you're a ghost, you don't need to really be in the chair. I mean, I guess you could say the ghost is linked to the chair. I mean, that, I, fine, I mean, but, but some of it just isn't really quite making sense to me. Here's an investigation by American Paranormal Investigations. Um, recorded events, if you move her chair to a different location, she will move it back. Interesting. Also testable. Each person reported a feeling of being watched. The team was exhausted and uh, the video cameras were unable to photograph because of constant battery drain. Now this is also a, a hallmark of, of many ghost reports that, that, uh, that batteries in everything from cell phones to cameras mysteriously drain uh, at haunted premises. So that's, that's kind of par for the course. Um, and it says, uh, Oh, here, here's, a, here's a narrative. Anne was giving a dowsing rod demonstration in the living room. Now, again, I have a problem with just, you know. Anyway, I'll move on. <laughs> After the dowsing rod demonstration in the living room, all three present heard the metal kitchen doorknob turn once and then back again. Anne stopped and went to inspect the doorknob. However, upon walking to the door, there was no doorknob. <laughs> there was no doorknob. <laughs> now... Uh, honestly, I'm not, I, you know, could it be that the, the sound you heard wasn't a doorknob? It sounded like a doorknob, and then because you think it's a doorknob, you go, there's no doorknob, and it's really freaking you out? I don't know, but apparently that was very significant to them, so I made a note. <laughs> Main claims, Mary the ghost opens and shuts doors. Batteries are mysteriously drained of power in the house. There's a ghost photo in the kitchen, which I will touch on later. Hell is unleashed if Mary's room is disturbed. <laughs> now, as a scientific paranormal investigator who likes to look at these things scientifically and, and, and examine falsifiable claims, that is, claims which can be proven true or false, I love claims like this. Because if this is true, then hell will be unleashed. I don't know what that means. Uh, another, another four years of Bush. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but... Something bad, something evil will fall upon our world if Mary's room is, um, is disturbed. I don't know. But again, love these sorts of claims. We can test these. And there's also some EVPs and ghost voices were, were recorded. So the producer's talking to me. She's like, well, I, I flew in. The, the PA came and picked me up. And we went there. And I stopped and got some, got some supplies. And uh, the producer pulls me aside and says, um, you know, how are we going to do this? What, do, what are you going to do that we can tape that would be good for the show? And, and I've given that some thought on the plane over. I made a, I made a quick list of, of things that we could test. You know, the, again, they want, <laughs> these are testable claims. Uh, my suggestion is that we move the objects in Mary's room and see if hell is breaking loose or not. Um, again, it's, I, I don't make these claims. I work from the claims. This is what they say. I'm not, I'm not making this up. This is what they said. If they're wrong, then that's not my problem. Um, she's like, good, we, we can do that, you know, we can move objects, you know, the producer says that's, that's fine, shouldn't be, shouldn't be an issue there, we can set up a camera crew there. I said, well, how about we look at the unexplained battery drain? Again, either batteries uh, in a haunted location are drained or they are not drained. It's one of the two. This is no matter of opinion, this is a testable thing that we can find. That's good, we can, that's fine, you know, we can test the batteries, buy new batteries, no problem at all. Um, and then, then came the EVPs. And do all you know what EVPs are? It's basically electronic voice phenomena. It's, it's, the, it's the idea that if you record something in a quiet room or an area where there's no one around, 
uh, you listen to minutes, hours, days, whatever, and you go back and you listen to them. If you tweak them, you listen very closely that you may hear uh, sounds or voices or something else like that. And um, having done this, th this research for quite a while and also having a background in psychology, I'm kind of familiar with some of the ways in which we can, our minds can basically interpret uh, meaning into uh, basically random phenomena. You know, if you hear someone say, ah, did you hear that? Yeah, it sounded like, you know, Bob is dead or something. <laughs> um, and so in order to test this, before I left for the shoot, I spent about an hour getting samples of EVPs from supposedly actual legitimate reputable ghost hunters. I downloaded them and I listened to them and I wanted to test whether the, the people that were making these claims could in fact distinguish uh, you know, actual sounds and words from, from randomness or not. And so what I did was uh, I made a list and so for example I would listen to it and I saw what they said it was. Like you know, Mary is here. Mary is here. Did you hear this? Mary is here. Or is it Mary wants a beer? <laughs> Or is it uh, Mary's cheer? I mean, t t and so I, 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 I had the original, and then I, I wrote five different A, B, C, D, E, different things, and asked, and I was going to present this test to them, say, this, you know, this, listen to this recording, this EP. If you can do what you're claiming to do, then presumably it should match. If, if, if this ghost is what is saying what they're saying, it, this is actually what they're claiming to say, then you should be able to tell me which of these five things it, the, the ghost is saying. It's a, it's, you know, it's pretty simple basic test. I mean, there's, it's not rock solid science, but it, it's certainly getting that direction. And so I explained this to the producer. Um, and she was like, well, um, we, um, there's a problem. Uh, the, the problem was that we don't want to make them look stupid. <laughs> Direct quote. Uh, the problem is that we, uh, th that if this, and it was, it, it was at this point in which the, the investigation took a little bit of a turn for me because it was clear to me that my job was not to investigate. My job was not to, to find the truth about the haunting. My job was to not make them look stupid. Not necessarily an easy task. <laughs> um, but, but hey, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm willing to listen to people. I, I work with people. I'm happy to talk. You know, I, I try to keep an open mind about things. This is the producer's point of view. And to my mind, it wasn't about ma making people look stupid. My goal was not to show them up to be stupid or crazy. It's like, you're claiming you could do this. Can you do this or not? This, was not a, this wasn't a trap. This wasn't a, a gotcha. This is, hey, can you do this or not? But anyway, that, that idea got, uh, got uh, deep sixed. Here's uh, demonologist Dave and his boo crew. That, well, that was what the producers called him. I didn't make that up. That was like, oh, the boo crew. Um, there's Demon Dave in the middle there. And uh, that's his, uh, his wife, I believe, uh, and his mother on the right-hand side, uh, and, and two others. And uh, I did a little bit of research on him before I got there, just to sort of find out who, you know, who he was, what he was doing. Um, he's, he's got sort of a cottage business on, on demonology and ghost busting. And do any of you know him, or is he here? Oh, good, OK. <laughs> just, just checking. I, I did a, I, last year I did a ghost hunting thing and uh, I, was meant, I was talking about Patrick Burns, the guy from Hunting Evidence, and I'm like, oh, Patrick, hi. Is Patrick here? Whew. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so this is demonologist Dave and his boo crew. Nice enough guys, interesting uh, talking to them. And they did sort of what you would consider to be the typical ghost investigation stuff, the, the protocols. Basically the stuff that I uh, describe and then debunk in detail in chapter four of my new book. Uh, there he is uh, setting up the, uh, the, the gear, lots of cameras, lots of gear, uh, just cases and cases and cases of these uh, equipment, gear, um, cameras, just ungodly amounts of technology. And there's uh, one of the guys, I've forgotten his name, he's a nice guy, I don't mean to slight him by forgetting his name, but uh, he's, he was out there wandering around the perimeter. And I have to say, when you see the TV shows, it looks like one guy's out there, there's like eight people out there. It's like, ooh, he, he's by himself in the backyard. No, there's like four audio guys, a camera guy, an AP, and someone drinking a beer trying to make sure that no one walks on the property. So, uh, so just, you know, just FYI, it's not quite what, what you would say. So, and they set up cameras everywhere as well. Um, the other people on the shoot 
And the other people on the shoot, so again, this, there was this crew, and I'm just, I'm sort of just thrown into this mix. I don't really know who these people are one way or the other. There was Mel, who's a psych who's actually here today. Uh, she, she's here at the con. Uh, since she goes by Vegan Mel, very nice woman. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't purposely get a photo of her half naked in a cage. Uh, that was just, I didn't happen to get a photo of her at the shoot, and this was the only one that I could find. Uh, I, it, it works, uh, but uh, anyway, so don't uh, be nice to animals, is, is what she's saying. And then there's Andy. Andy's a scientist um, who uh, had developed a kind of ghost walkie-talkie. Uh, he claimed that it's, these, there's gadgets, in fact, you can see them right here, that uh, he said, uh, tune into vibrations that come from the other side or, or something. I, I didn't totally understand what he was saying. Uh, I'm not sure I would have understood even had he explained it. Um, but he, uh, he apparently had done some work on uh, pacemakers and stuff. And he'd, he'd done a, a, like heart valve stuff. So he was, I, I, don't, I didn't ask him what his degree is in. He seemed to be something of a scientist. I don't, I don't know exactly what he did. But. So on the investigation day one, Mel and Andy show up. Um, and I'm just, again, I'm just sitting there trying to figure out who's for So I, I had a bunch of tasks here. The first task was to be the token skeptic on the show. That is, try and, you know, because what's going to happen is, is the, you know, they're, they're going to get videotaped. They're going to be like, all right, what's this, Mr. Skeptic? See that going on there? What is that? What is that? Huh? Get the, get the camera there. What is this? What is this? I don't know where it is. You know, I, you know so the, these things take time to, to investigate and thoroughly understand. And so part of my job there was to try and conduct a, some semblance of an actual legitimate investigation into what was going on here. The other part was, of course, uh, trying to uh, watch for any weirdness or see what's going on with these other, these other, uh, you know, these other, other two groups, uh, the Boo Crew and, and Mel and Andy. So they show up, and um, they, they seem to be uh, channeling a drunken ghost. And I don't, I don't mean that in a negative. It's just sort of she was, like, she was like getting into the whole channel thing and talking and sort of mumbling, and I, I'd seen this before. I mean, this is nothing new to me. I'd seen it in, uh, in Lilydale, for example, in, in uh, Western New York, the spiritualist camp where people are uh, claiming to talk to the dead. So she was doing some of this, and uh, none of the information, as far as I could tell, was verifiable. I mean, if you're, if you're going to talk to the dead, then give me some dates. Give me some, something I can use, not just grandma loves you and it's cold. Um, <laughs> really, I mean, you know, give, give me something that's useful, something that's testable. Apparently, they were hearing spirit voices, because um, Mel would wave her, her arms and meditate and ask questions and spirits, and, and Andy would join in with his, with his gizmos and whatever else. And again, I'm not making fun of it. I mean, this is, this is what they did, and it's, it's, I've seen it before. That's fine. Um, and uh, there's Andy's ghost walkie-talkie there. Well, iPhone, yeah, there you go. Um, uh, the Boo Crew, anyway, it was actually odd, because at first I thought they were all together. I sort of thought that Mel and Andy, the Boo Crew, they were all one collective group. Well, it turns out they were two very, very different groups that didn't like each other. Uh, yes, it was, it was odd. The, um, the Boo crew um, were very suspicious of Mel and Andy because they thought that, um, well, to be honest, they thought that, that in, in what Mel was doing, incantations and channeling stuff, that there would be, she would be bringing bad juju. That, that, that she was opening portals to which she couldn't, along those lines. So they, they were, which was fascinating to me because, you know, they're, they're like, well, you know, they're, they're, they're doing bad things. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, and you're doing what? Okay. Um, but anyway, so, so they, so yeah, they were, they're, they, typically what happened was Mel and Andy would be in one part of the house with their, their crew, their camera guy and the audio, whatever else, and they're doing something. The, the Boo crew is setting up elsewhere. The, the, the TV crew's with them, and I'm just sort of wandering around collecting facts and interviewing people and trying to figure out what's going on. So I'm sort of running back and forth trying to, trying to figure out, see, see what they're doing to find these ghosts. Nothing, by the way, that I would have done when I find ghosts, when I, when I, when I, well, when I search for ghosts and do investigations. Uh, the, nothing that they did investigation-wise resembles anything that I would have done, and I'll talk about that later. So the demon, uh, demon Dave and his boo crew were, uh, they were praying, uh, rosary thing, um, uh, holding hands, this and that. Again, things that I don't normally do when I conduct a scientific investigation, but whatever. Uh, and they did a provocation. Uh, they weren't getting any results, and so they were concerned. They were ups I don't know, upset, but they were getting annoyed because the, the ghosts or whatever was in the house was said to be in the house. 
uh, weren't, weren't showing up. They weren't, you know, showing up as swarms of locusts, or I don't know what they thought was going to happen, but so uh, they, they did provocation. They, they yelled at a wall and uh, tossed holy water on it, and they found nothing until they pulled out the big guns. That's when they pulled out the FLIR guns, the forward-looking infrared radar there. Uh, and this is, a, a, as you can see, these, you know, these are the, this is the stuff, and, you know, basically it's a temper, temperature differentials, and you, you look it through it, it's, it's like the, the, the heat vision that you see on TV. And that's when they found a vortex portal to another dimension. Yes, you didn't read about that? Oddly enough, well, uh, that's, that was what they, they were thinking it was. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm not... I'm not exaggerating for a I mean, that's what they said. They, they thought it might be a portal to another dimension. To my mind, I thought it was a warm spot on a wall. <laughs> um, it was about seven or eight degrees warmer than the surrounding area, which is verifiable. And they, I, I saw that. Fair enough. Uh, again, what was fascinating to me was that was their interpretation is this could be an interdimensional portal. Now... I, I, it's hard for me to even, okay. <laughs> Let me back up. Occam's razor, anybody know what Occam's razor is? Okay. All right, I'll, I'll, just, I'll make this brief for those of you who don't. Basically, Occam's razor suggests that it's, it's a natural guy named William of Occam, who, who had this principle many, many years ago, a couple centuries ago, who said that basically, if you have a phenomenon that you're trying to explain, and there are different ways of explaining that phenomenon, in general, the best way to explain it is the one that has the fewest assumptions or, or makes the fewest demands. That is, you know, if, if, uh, if the lights go out in here, if they suddenly go out, uh, well, why is that? Maybe the power went out. Maybe someone leaned against the light switch. Um, maybe, maybe there was an atomic bomb that went off uh, in Smyrna. Now, now, any of those are possible, but which, which, which is more likely? Which one, which one has the best evidence for it? And so, therefore, when we're doing, or, or you yeah, take your pick. There's all any number of things. So, when you do these investigations, you have to go with the, you have to go with the ones that are more likely, the ones that have the best evidence for them. And in this particular case, my thought that that really anything could be creating a warm spot in a wall that wasn't an interdimensional portal. Um, I, I'm just saying. Um, there's the there's the uh, the basement there. They did some more testing there. You can actually see an orb uh, in this, in this photo. There's a. I won't get into orbs that don't get me started. <laughs> um, but, uh, and in fact, anyway, that, I'll come back to that later. So, what are the possible explanations, again, invoking Occam's razor, what are the possible explanations for a wall? Well, there was a beehive behind the wall. Interesting. Uh, and there were, in fact, dead bees on the floor. Well, bees are, you know, animals, and they can create heat and movement, whatever else. Um, bird's nest. Could be there's a bird nest behind the wall. And again, remember, the, the temperature differential wasn't dramatic. It wasn't like suddenly 200 degrees. It was sort of like, you know, a little warmer here than there. I should add, by the way, that the electricity to the house had been cut off. Uh, in fact, I don't even know if they had any uh, even to begin with. So they had uh, generators. In order to run the lights for the TV crew, they had generators that were way in the back, and they, they had ran big cables through there. So presumably, there was no electricity, any live electricity in the house, which would either create electricity or heat uh, or anything else. And I didn't test this. I mean, I'd have to contact an electrician to double check. But that's, that's what they said, and I, I have no real reason to believe it. Could be a squirrel, other varmint, electricity, or heat duct, or of course, uh, the uh, dimensional portal to demons, uh, to angels, and ghosts. Yes? Was this an external or internal wall? Internal wall. Here is my best explanation, which is uh, the bees, which you can see near the vortex site. Uh, again, dead animals, I mean, can I prove that's what it is? Not necessarily. Is it, you know. Um, but uh, again, I'm, I'm guessing that between those two, I'll, I'll get to questions later. So here, here's some of the text, here's some of the experiments that we could do. So again, this is my favorite, because um, it involves hell. We've got, um, we've got before and after. On the left-hand side is the, the image of Mary's room before our little experiment. And then I disturbed it as much as I could. To much to the consternation, I should add, of uh, Demon Dave and Mel and Andy. They were not pleased with me moving things around. I didn't really care. I was doing, a, <laughs> I was doing investigation, and I told them that I would take full responsibility if hell did, in fact, break loose. 
Uh, so I had signed something, I don't know. Um, so we've got, we've got uh, the pillows. There's a couple, this is sort of like you know, spot the differences thing. I moved the pillow around. I actually moved a chair. I took the, uh, I took the, uh, the photographs off the table there. Um, just a variety, I, I, as much as I could without, you know, damaging the place, but trying to make it as disturbed as possible. Uh, and we, we would just see what happens. Then we have the ghost battery experiment. Uh, and uh, this didn't make the cut, uh, which uh, shouldn't surprise anyone. But uh, this was, um, there's me testing, uh, putting the batteries next to the, the spooky ass uh, elk or whatever that is. Um, so as part of my investigation, I went to Target and I dropped uh, $45 in batteries. I know that because I don't think I've gotten reimbursed for that. Um, <laughs> But uh, I went and got a bunch of batteries, and I put them in different places inside the house and also outside of the house. So you need a control group. And the idea was either the batteries are drained. Uh, in fact, we went back um, later on. I'll talk about that later. Uh, again, simple experimental, simple experiment. I mean, either the battery is drained or they're not drained. It, it's, it's one or the other. Uh, and again, this is a continual claim, so might as well test it. And then there was the ghost photograph. Um, I don't know if you can see. Can you guys can you guys see anything in there? Uh, what do you, what do you guys see? Do you see a, a young woman in a long dress or a, a boy carrying wood or what? A guy a boy with wood. I don't know what. <laughs> what, what do you what, what do you see there? Okay. Well, this was taken. I, I can give you a clue. This was taken uh, in the kitchen. And there's a window behind the photographer and to the left. So this is this is in fact uh, this is in fact sunlight, but there's also uh, something else there. So anyway, uh, some people said it was uh, anteater. What else do we see? Birds, pigs, chupacabra. <laughs> now you're being silly. You've crossed the line, my friend. This was serious until you came along. It's a rabbit. Okay, well, a rabbit with a limp. Wow, you guys are good. What am I doing? I should get out of this business. Um, so these were, the things, these were the things that were presented to me as evidence for the ghost. Uh, this, was, this is what I got to work with. Um, I wish there had been more. This, this is what they gave me. So the results of Mel and Andy's seance was mysterious low murmurs or voices, which was certainly true. They, there was some, uh, and, and part of the problem was that I couldn't get right next to them because I wasn't in the shot. This is, this is part of what impedes me from doing a, a, as much of an investigation as I would like, is you know I'm trying to get in there to, to understand what's going on, and the producer's like, uh, get out of the way, you're not in the shot. Or, or you're in the shot, actually. Uh, and so I need to, I'm like, well, yeah, but they're trying to contact the dead. I investigate this stuff. That's what you want me here for. I need to be there. I can't be outside in the parking lot sleeping. And so anyway, I sort of, it was this sort of tug and you know this tug of war, this balance between well you're either going to you know help us out or not. So fine. So I, I did as best I could within the constraints of the production. Uh, and there was in fact some weird kind of murmuring stuff that came through um, through Andy's uh, Andy's uh, walk, ghost walkie-talkie. Demon Davis Boo Crew they found nothing except the interna the interdimensional vortex to um, which again. Um, there you go. Uh, disturbing Mary's room. There was no sign of hell breaking loose, nor heck, or any mild, uh, mild version of hell. Uh, the ghost-proof batteries. Uh, the testing revealed that all the batteries, including those uh, in in Wolf Manor and outside Wolf Manor, had no um, no battery drain whatsoever. Maintained a full charge. And the kitchen ghost photo. Uh, was probably uh, was a dark image of poor quality. It's probably the results of pareidolia, which is basically when people see faces and clouds and trees and tortillas and whatnot. Um, and that's I mean just it's a common fact. I mean there's not you know there's not much disputing that. Now you can claim that well it's, it's a shadow figure or whatever else, but that that was my best guess. Uh, there I am investigating the ghost photo. Uh, again, the, the results of which were completely edited out of the. Uh, in fact, that's a. Uh, an audio tech guy that was helping me do some of the investigation because he was, it was interesting because the crew was actually pretty skeptical. I mean, they were, I mean, the crew, it's just a job to them. It, that's, this is nothing special. <laughs> They're doing their tech work, and the, you know, 12 hour days, bad food, you know, what, what, nothing special to them. But they were interested in what I was doing because I was sort of bringing some science to it and they liked that. Uh, so I was being interviewed there, and there's, there's actually the, uh, a, 
a framed photo of the ghost there. I'm talking to the producer there. Um, uh, cute cute uh, producer. She's married. Um, anyway, my best guess it was this Odie. <laughs> if you look closely, if you look closely, am I wrong on this, or is this Odie? Well, Odie, well, I, Garfield was gone, and so I guess he was, uh, he's looking for food. I don't know. I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm doing the best I can with what I got. I'm like, well, this is, this is, I mean, part of the problem here is that that could be anything, or it could be nothing. Give me more than that. I, I you know, the, and first of all, the, the image that they gave me was like this really crappy third generation printout. <laughs> I'm like, no. It, I said, you know, if you want me to do a real investigation, this, I need the original image. Give me a give me a give me a, a, you know, a TIFF file. Give me something beyond just this bad photocopied third generation stuff. So they couldn't provide that, and so I mean they gave me what they could, I guess, but that wasn't much. So so basically the only thing that was left uh, that I was going to try and explain were the spirit voices contacted by Mel and Andy. And this was this was kind of intriguing to me just because it was sort of one of the sort of last last things that was left that I hadn't, hadn't looked at. So, um, oh, I should add that, I mean, this, this, all this happened at like, God, it was like, I don't know, probably 1 o'clock, 2 in the morning, 1.30. We were all wrapped up. I'm going back to the hotel. Uh, you know, everyone's, everyone's uh, just, everyone's tired, wiped out, you know, running around, chasing ghosts, whatever. Um, and the next morning over breakfast, it was fascinating. I talked to one of the audio techs. I'm sitting there, I was actually sitting there uh, having some uh, pancakes and writing up my notes because I mean, when I'm doing investigations, I keep a notebook and have to constantly scribble notes and quotes and facts and dates and stuff. And I'm trying to get all this stuff down. <laughs> and uh, the audio guy comes up to me and he sits down next to me and he's, he's, got a, he's got a cup of coffee, much like the one I'm sipping. And he says, uh, I saw something really interesting last night. I'm like, okay, what... Uh, what was that? Well, um, you have to understand that on a TV shoot, there are basically two, ty two types of microphones. There's a boom mic, which is one of the w big, you know, massive you know, umbrella thing looking that, that, you know, comes over where they're holding the long pole, whatever else. And the second type of mic is a lav mic, a lapel mic, like this one I'm, I'm talking into. And uh, what was interesting was that during the Mel and Andy shoot, the ghost voices only came from one source. <laughs> now, understand that the ghost voices were supposedly disembodied spirits. That is, you know, ghostly voices coming from above or under my shoes or what have you. But oddly enough, and this is something that, that actually only a audio tech could have known. And it turns out that the voices came from Andy. That is. Well, <laughs> turns out, he says, well, just, you know, because there was that weird sound, you know, the, the ghostly voices. He says, you know, on the boom mic, well, there's nothing. And in fact, Mel and Andy were both mic'd up. And the ghostly voices only came through Andy's lapel mic. Now, you could say that, I guess, the ghosts were localized right around his mouth. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't... Uh, I don't know what to make of that, and I, I kind of do. But um, uh, was it? it I, I don't know. I, was he faking it? I don't know. Was it? Uh, was it all a mistake? I don't know. But I, I, I have suspicions. Um, but it was very interesting that the ghostly voices only came from him. Um, and uh, and so there really there was no evidence of anything strange or bizarre at Wolf Manor, except of course uh, Demon Dave and his boot. Well, everyone else really, but me. Uh, was weird, and I'm sure they thought the same of me. Uh, at that point, the investigation moved to Carson, California. And it was interesting how this all unfolded, because I, uh, t it turns out that the, 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 um, the Carson ghost is in the uh, laboratory of Andy, the, uh, the, the, the scientist there. And what I think, hap a, what I think happened was that... Um, there's a story, I'll, I'll tell you when the mic's off. Um, 
what, 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 anyway, I, what I think happened was that, uh, that the, they didn't find too much of Wolfman. I mean, they had already scripted this ahead of time, so they knew they were going to go to his, his, his shoot there. We moved to Andy's office where um, uh, the cameras uh, supposedly contacted a, uh, saw a haunted chair. I, I don't think we're going to be able to get YouTube on that, but, or can we? Can we get, uh, I have the URL, can we, any chance of? Possibly. I'll take that as a no. If you tell you what, I'll keep talking. If you can pull it up, so much the better. Uh, but basically, that is the haunted chair. I know it doesn't look haunted. I smelled it. Well, I didn't. Well, I did smell it actually. But um, I did all the things I could to test whether it was haunted or not. Uh, and if we can, uh, we may or may not be able to get the, uh, the the video on that. But in a nutshell, what happened was that uh, again, he all his his evidence of the haunting was on videotape, which is of course useful. That's that's good stuff, you know, as far as it goes. And, um, and it just so happened that the, uh, the chair uh, had spun about, uh, not 90 degrees, probably about 40 degrees, give or take. And, and you see this uh, in the video, just the chair sitting there and just slowly turns on its own. No one's around, as far as we can tell from the video. Uh, and this supposedly happened late at night when everyone was gone. And everyone's like, well, the producer's like, well, we got a haunted chair. I mean, that's something, isn't it? I'm like, well, you know, I guess. Um, and so I did a, I did a, a little uh, investigation on that. I don't, I don't know whether we'll be able to. While he's seeing if we can pull that up, um, any questions so far? Yep. Do you want? Yeah, why don't you bring, come up and talk to the. Yeah, that, that was the haunted chair. Why, why in particular was there a camera facing this chair? Excellent question. Why was the camera facing that chair? Very good question, actually. Um, <laughs> I have suspicions. Um, oh no, but I, again, I'm not. But that is exactly the sort of question you have to ask. Uh, and 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 often, for example, when when someone brings a, a photograph, a photo of a ghost or whatever else, part of the thing, I, first things I look at is why did someone take this photo? Because uh, oh, if you look here, you know there's a look. If you if you look at this blade of grass, there's a Bigfoot in it. Why are you taking a picture of a blade of grass? I mean, you can do whatever you want, but but the, the, there's oftentimes people who fake things. I'm not saying this was fake, but oftentimes when people fake photographs, they're so busy trying to do their clever you know, either photoshopping or or or, um, or photographing practical um, images that they forget to. Give a plausible backstory. I mean, if 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 someone's if family's at the beach, in the background there's a lake monster in the lake. Okay, well I I can see that. But a lot of times, like, well, why is that camera there? What were you What were you doing? Why Why did it happen to catch this ghost? Uh, in this particular case, um, that was one of a handful. That's not mine. <laughs> um, that was one of a handful. That was one of a handful of of security cameras. Uh, there were actually, I think, uh, I think three security cameras in there. I'll, and if we can get this working, even if we can, I'll, I'll skip over. But I'll, I'll talk more about the setup. But that was one of the original. Um, oh, there you go. Uh, anyway, did that answer your question? Another question? While we're, yeah, come on up, please. Oh, God. You know what? Uh, well, let's just go back. This is this is not worth it. But, okay, we got a question here. But could you could you fully explain why these vortexes killed bees? That, that's what I, Can I explain why the vortexes killed bees? That's the, you know. I cannot. Or, or why the bees uh, came out of the vortex? Why the bees came out of the vortex? Well, see that that was one of the things, and, and I was I was talking to them, and and it was fascinating to me because, again, they sincerely believe this, and I'm and I was like, really? I mean, I, with all due respect. You really, you think that this may be an interdimensional <laughs> vortex? Um, um, and what was odd was that at the end of the, just, just go back to where we were. This is, I figured out why. I just, yeah. skip it. Um, but no, but, but that, that was, in fact, it, the, th the same issue came up with, um, with all the gear. Um, because what would happen was that, um, I talked to, to one of the guys from the Boo Crew and when, when the producers were taking us back and forth to the hotel. And I just sort of passing the time, I asked him, I said, 
I said, why do you think it is, because I'm, I'm genuinely curious, why do you think it is that, thanks Derek, why do you think it is that after so much time and so many investigations, so many people, amateur ghost hunters, whatever else, trying to find ghosts, the evidence is, is just not there. And he, and he admitted it. He's like, yeah, yeah, there's still no good scientific evidence. And I said, why do you think that is? I, I'm really genuinely curious to know. And he said, well, I think the problem is that, uh, that, that science can't prove ghosts. That, that gear and you know, that, that technology, that ghosts are unexplainable by, by you know, there, there's really nothing that, 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 that our current science can, can use to, to investigate ghosts. I said, well, well, hold on here. Just this morning, I saw you guys unloading your van full of tens of thousands of dollars of high-tech gear. Cameras, EMF detectors, uh, electromagnetic, it just EMF, audio, I mean, just thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of gear and all these massive things. What's all that for? I mean, if, if you're telling, if you're sincerely telling me that, that none of this stuff can detect ghosts because it's beyond science, what's all this stuff for? If that's really what you believe. And it was odd because no one had ever asked him that before. I mean, I mean he just, he just, he didn't, oh. Um, and, it, it, you know, it wasn't a gotcha question. I think it's a legitimate question. If, you, if you're going to say that that's, that is the reason why we still don't have good evidence, then why are you bringing all this gear out if you, if you think it's, it's ultimately futile anyway? Anyway, the, the haunted chair, um, it, it uh, basically, I'll just sort of touch on it. It went from that position all the way around. In fact, I'll, I'll show you the, you know, the haunted chair. And then there was also the wall falling down. And this is a little partition here. This is, a, this is a different camera. This is actually, this is a, well, it's a different camera mounted in the same general area. That's the chair there, actually, there. And what had happened was there's stairs going down. It's a sort of elevated thing. And this uh, partition went over, fell over on its own. Bam! Just like that. And you can, you can hear it in the, in the video. And, and feel free to write down the URL. You can, you can check it out. So um, I reviewed the, and the, the stuff with Andy and the wall and mounting. And, uh, and actually, to their credit, uh, in the final version of this episode, the way it was cut, they actually did a pretty good job of representing my investigation into the chair and the wall. So if you, if you happen to uh, come across a copy of uh, the uh, mystery quest that I'm on with the Andalberry Estates, um, they, you know, they cut out a lot of my investigation. But to their credit, they, they, did, uh, they did a good clip of me. Uh, not not me, but just in terms of you know doing the investigation there. So there I am looking at the the haunted wall. Again, this is the partition has come over, fallen down. So I'm trying to figure out what made the wall fall down. Well, I noticed a couple things. Um, first of all, the the uh, they was mounted. It was actually a, a leftover from like a, an office, you know, like the partitions you see in like cubicles, uh, and that that's what it was. And so. Uh, I noticed that the screws were, were not mounted very well, nor, nor in there very deep. And I noticed that not only were they not anchored very well, but also the, um, it was off kilter. It was unbalanced actually in two, in, two, in two dimensions because this is one side of it and this is the other side of it. And so not only was it not flush, it actually wouldn't stand up at its own. You actually had to push against it to keep it up, but it wasn't even level. It was like that. So it was, it was it was unstable in, on several axes. Um, so I concluded that it was not a ghost, but material fatigue. That is, uh, this had been screwed into drywall, not very far in, and eventually the drywall gives out. It's, it's, it's not anchored well. It's just basically gypsum. Uh, there's no real, real, uh, real mystery to it. It couldn't sit flush with the wall. And interestingly enough, when I was investigating the, the, the falling partition, on the, uh, on the original tape, you can actually hear a thud or a crash or something. It, it, it's, 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 it's faint, but you can hear it. And, and this, this reminded me that when you're doing investigations, you need to look at all the evidence. You can't just look at the videotape. If you can get, obviously, the, the best thing is, the, is get the original. Don't get some third-hand generation. Go to the original material. In this particular case, there was a loud sound, a door slamming or something, that, that uh, just happened to have just before the wall suddenly fell over, and what I suspect was that in the back of the, um, in the in the back of Andy's office there, there are trucks. Uh, and there's trucks coming and going. It's an industrial area. I think a truck just backed up and slammed a door down, or was getting the garbage or whatever. And I think that that was just enough vibration to make it fall over. 
Then we have the haunted chair. Um, that is the haunted chair, and uh, I basically, I carefully reviewed the video a dozen times and the conditions surrounding the chair. And that was the original chair. I got the same chair and duplicated it as best I could. And so I, I wanted to see what happened here. How, is it, is it you know, was it possible that, uh, that cars from the freeway were making vibrations that could have moved the chair? Well, as it turned out, no, that, that didn't really make sense. So I measured the chair's rate and angle of movement. So that's, uh, that's where it was before it moved, that's where it was after it moved. And, and, the, and again, the, the camera would be from the top, uh, looking, looking that way. So it moved, it moved with the back towards the camera. Um, and I don't have the video, so uh, I will, I'll just basically tell you what happened. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll get back to that. So what happened was that uh, I, I, for the TV crew, I had showed that, in fact, if you, look at the, uh, if you look at the video, the chair moved just enough. It didn't go all the way around in a circle, which would have been interesting. In fact, uh, it, it, it went from, well, if I had a swivel chair, I'll show you, but it basically went from, let's say, Derek, raise your hand for a second. Okay, pretend you have, um, I don't know, a fishing wire in your hand, fishing line. Thank you. Okay, so, so I'm the chair. Okay, now no, pull slightly. There we go. So you just did like that. And the, the chair moved just enough. Uh, it didn't, again, didn't go all around, didn't jump in the air. It just, the, this just enough that would have accounted for, for, for the movement. So I recreated this for the video crew, and they were, they were actually, you know, it was kind of hard on me because I'm, I'm, you know, all this taping is going on in one night, and I'm trying to sort of come up with an experiment on the fly and do all this. And, and in the end, it actually duplicated it exactly. I mean, the same rate of movement, the same angle, whatever else. Uh, so that, uh, and, and then at this point, uh, I was then asked to explain this uh, to Andy. Uh, so I had to, um, I was like, well, how do I, because I don't want to insult him by suggesting that it might have been a hoax. So I said, well, uh, my guess is that, that, uh, that, you know, maybe it was a ghost, maybe it wasn't a ghost. I can tell you that I can exactly duplicate what is seen on the video. And furthermore, the, the angle from where it's photographed, you can't see anything else. I mean, that, that, that's, that's it. I mean, that's, it just swivels around. You just have that, that field of view. So what I did was I, uh, I said, well, Andy, um, I think someone's playing a trick on you. <laughs> I said, uh, I suspect I, maybe one of your employees is playing a gag or a hoax. I don't know. But all I know is that, um, that I, I just see nothing uh, suspicious here. So there was a second ghost stakeout. I'll, I'll spare you the, uh, the details on that, but it was basically uh, the ghost ventriloquism hour and the uh, demon Dave and his boo crew scared himself shitless review. Um, so in a nutshell, I did not find any evidence of evil, uh, demons, <laughs> ghosts. Um, uh, so nothing, nothing quite like that. I did find uh, people who sincerely believe that ghosts uh, are behind every door, people who will fake ghost evidence. And you know, again, maybe some people are the victims of hoaxers, some people are, 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 the, the, are the hoaxers themselves, but there was certainly some evidence of, of some tampering going on there, and of course some insight into the conflicting motives of a TV crew. So with that, and with the remaining seven minutes and 40 seconds, uh, I will happily entertain comments, questions, criticisms, uh, money, uh, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to throw my way. If you don't mind, I'm going to sit down because I've been <laughs> I've been doing this all day long. <sighs> okay, now for the ghost photo, was Can there? Can you get her, her mic hot, please? Yes. Yeah. Um, for the ghost photo, is there any uh, chance that there could have been a light source behind the photographer? Because to me, that looks very much like someone taking a picture with a overhead viewfinder and their shadow being cast on the wall. That, that yeah, that's a good question. Um, from what I could tell, uh, you know, part of the problem was that. Um, the original photographer wasn't available. I mean, th this, is, this is the thing. They, someone will give you a photograph, and it's like, well, what's this? Well, who is the photographer? When was it taken? I need more details than what's this. And in this particular case, I, I was given almost nothing. Um, so you know, my, my guess is that, and I, in fact, I tried to duplicate it with the help of the, the audio guy. Um, but I just meant in that location, is there any chance that there could have been natural light from behind? Yes, but not from that angle. Uh, the windows were would be uh, the windows would be behind and to the left, 
whereas that light would have to come behind to the right. So, yes. I have two quick yes or no answers uh, or questions. Excuse me. Um, first, I'll take the answer. Uh, yeah, there, there you go. No, no and yes. Um, I'm hoping. Uh, did would you feel? I haven't seen this particular show, uh, but I was going to ask you, uh, being the token skeptic, yes. uh, would you say that they used editing to make you look wrong or in any way? Um, Stupid, yes. Stupid, uh, Stupid would yeah. be the word you're looking for. Uh, would you say that, that that's how it was portrayed? <laughs> well, I, I would say that, um, I would say that the editors and producers were more interested in making entertaining television than shedding light on whether the place was haunted or not. Awesome. Uh, I, I, again, I mean, they, that's the problem with doing these shows, is that they can cut it however they want. They can cut you out completely, they can make you look an idiot, uh, they can cut you when you're you know, picking your nose or whatever. I mean, that, there's all sorts of ways they can make you look bad. I don't think they went out of their way to look, make me look bad. And they, you know, again, in the final show, they, they gave a fair representation of my explaining the, the moving chair and, and the following thing. So I give them credit for that. At the same time, they, they completely cut out any mention of the ghost photo, the drained batteries, uh, so those things, which were, to my mind, important to recognize <laughs> in terms of how to investigate ghosts, were left on the cutting room floor. Um, I, I've been on shows that uh, are definitely, um, I don't want to say they're out to get you, but usually when I talk to the producers, I say, look, you know, if, you're, if, you're, if you want me on your show, are you going to bring good science to it? Because if not, then I'm not interested. Um, I mean, to be honest with you, the novelty of being on TV wore off a long time ago. And if you're not going to bring some science and skepticism to it, then call someone else. I, I'm not going to waste my time. So usually I get some sense of, I, I, kinda, I guess what I'm saying is that I tend to filter them before I, I get a sense of whether they're going to be fair to me or fair to the token skeptic before I get on. So The, the second question was, uh, did you get the producer's phone number? I did not. She was married. Oh. <sighs> that was the question. Damn. <laughs> I, no, I didn't. That's a good uh, I just have one quick question. Um, so obviously, you know, you're filming this sort of thing. You've got a bunch of people around. Like, mm -hmm. it's very evident that you know, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of stuff going on. But like, have you ever been on a scene for something like this and had anything weird happen that you couldn't explain, or just been talking about this sort of thing? You get the overactive ima imagination going on and just freak yourself out like or does that just not happen to you well it doesn't really happen to me and it certainly doesn't happen on tv shoots the thing you have to understand about tv shoots is they are long boring productions these things go on for 12 14 hours uh you know there's actually union things where they you know they they, they got them booked for 12 hours and after 12 hours and one minute they're paying them you know eight thousand dollars a minute so these are long shoots these are uh, I, I actually just got back uh last week from a from a uh, shoot on uh, Miracle Detectives. It's a new show, um, it hasn't aired yet, it'll be on Oprah's network. Uh, I was doing an investigation to uh, miracles in, um, in, uh, in Cleveland, Ohio. So I was out there looking at angel photographs wherever else. And so, you know, again, it's on, on the shoots themselves, no. It's, it's boring, mundane, um, you know, walk this way, hold it, we didn't get it, there's a plane in the way, do it again, so. Yeah. But no. Okay. I have a question about your investigations. What boggles me a lot about um, these TV shows and uh, amateur ghost hunter groups mm -hmm. is uh, when it comes to electronics and the understanding of how, I guess, EMF fields work and the uh, devices they use for that, because EMF detectors were used just to test faulty electrical systems. And my big question is, uh, when you go on investigations, do you pull like an EE engineer with you just to say, oh, well, this is faulty wiring. We're in an old house that doesn't have shielded wiring. Um, <laughs> I, I don't because uh, because really my investigation stems from the claims. Mm -hmm. I you know in order in order for me to investigate a haunting or or really anything else, I work from the claims. So what are you presenting me with? So for example, if if someone is say, is saying that there's cold spots in a room or you know or you know uh, you know a demonic face and something else, unless I know that that has some some tenable connection to uh, elect electricity, then I, I wouldn't bother with it. So in my case, no. Hi. Um, in the case of in paranormal investigative groups, do you find that ghost hunters would be, and I'm talking about the show 
more like you as far as being skeptics, investigating uh, claims? Well, they certainly claim to use science. Um, uh, I, I mentioned that I, basically all of chapter four in my book is, is okay. sort of ex explaining how the t they typically do it and then why, in fact, that's not, a, that's not about. I mean, a lot, this is part of the problem is that anybody can claim to be a scientist or a skeptic or whatever else. My question is, is wh what are the results? And in most of the cases I investigate, uh, the answers are clear. I mean, I, I solved, you know, the, the case of the Santa Fe Courthouse ghost, um, you know, Ogopogo. I mean, there's, there's lots of cases that, that end up getting solved, whereas if you look at the majority of, of less scientific ghost hunting groups, the, the end result of their investigation is, well, I don't know, we, we got a couple weird things and we'll never know. Right. So to my mind, part of, part of that answer is, what are the results? Are you getting something real? Are you getting an answer or is it just left as a question mark? Thank I'll you. take one more quick question if it's fast. Hello. Uh, this is in reference to the Wolf Manor or any named ghost mm -hmm. episodes. Does, do you or does someone on the production staff do research as far as title searches, birth certificates, death certificates to see was there someone named Mary living in the room, William the Cook? I, I don't, and, and, and mostly because uh, unless, again, there's some specific claim to it, um, it, it, you know, it, 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 if the claim has to do with Mary, then, then I'll look into it. But otherwise, knowing who died there in 1938, or, or if some old lady, I mean, there's, you know, probably women named Mary have died in this hotel. Does that mean it's haunted? No. So yeah. you have to go with the claims. But. Okay. Thanks. Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate your talking to me and listening to me. And